Hi, this is Tim Burton, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this lesson we're going to demonstrate how to calculate and interpret a confidence interval for the mean. So and let's suppose that we have a sample of 16 adults and we want to find out how often they eat out um, in a month and the average is 8 and the standard deviation for this sample is 2. So to calculate a confidence interval, you need three pieces of confidence interval for the mean. You need the sample statistic, in this case it's a mean. You need a standard error of the mean, and you need a um, basically a critical value um, from the appendix, in this case appendix B. So let's start by calculating the standard error of the mean. So the standard error of the mean for this sample is 0 0.50. Um, and now we've got two of the three pieces that we need. The last piece that we need is the t-value, and that is found by um, using the sample size, finding the degrees of freedom. This is one sample. Degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1, so the degrees of freedom will be 15. And then we look at appendix B, and we have to figure out, is this a one-tailed or a two-tailed situation? Confidence intervals are always two-tailed, so this would be a two-tailed. What's our alpha level going to be? If it's a 95% confidence interval, the alpha level is 0.05. So 0.05 alpha level, two-tailed, 15 degrees of freedom, our t-value that we're going to use is 2.131. Now we have all the pieces that we need to calculate uh, the confidence interval for the mean. The mean, well, I'll just show the formula first. That's the formula. Let's plug in the numbers. The mean is 8 plus or minus. This is plus or minus will create an interval around the mean, so this will be an interval that goes the same distance above the mean as it goes below the mean, and the mean will be exactly in the middle of this confidence interval. Standard error of the mean was 0 0.50. T-value that we found in appendix B is 2.131. Now we just do the math. 2.131 times 0.5 equals 1.0655. Let's just round that up to 1.07. And now we subtract 1.07 from 8, and we add 1.07 to 8. So that's going to be our confidence interval from the mean, our 95% confidence interval. Um, and here's how we interpreted a wrap words around it. We are 95% confident that our population mean is contained within the interval that ranges from 6.93 to 9.07. The purpose of building a confidence interval is to try and get a pretty good estimate of what your population statistic, what your population parameter is. So we know the sample mean, we're going to use that to build an interval that we're pretty confident, 95% confident in this case, contains the population mean. So when you're wrapping words around a confidence interval, you need to make sure that you're talking about the population parameter, in this case the population mean, in the confidence interval. That's, that's why we construct it. So that's how you calculate and interpret a confidence interval for the mean.
And you can create a confidence interval for any sample statistic. It's just a way of trying to find um, an interval in which you can be pretty confident that your population parameter will be contained. Hope that's helpful.